I was lucky enough to get an early look at an ergonomic keyboard from Xbose, creatively called the Xbose Ergonomic Mechanical Keyboard. And first of all, I just really want to make it clear that I don't really have much prolonged experiences with ergonomic keyboards, as well as ortholinear keyboards. The closest thing that I've had experience with would be the Mr. Barocco Split Keyboard, and because of what I do and testing other keyboards, I couldn't use this one for too long, so take this from an ergonomic beginner standpoint. The unit I received is a pre-production sample, so it's not a final version of the product, so I'll highlight the differences throughout the video. The Expose follows a very familiar type of ergonomic keyboard where the keyboard is essentially split in half, and then these halves are angled inwards which creates a more natural wrist position. If we reach towards our keyboards, we can see that our arms angle inwards since the keyboard is obviously not a shoulder width wide. But then since the keys are parallel to our body and our desk, we have to straighten our wrists just a bit, and that's why many ergonomic keyboards have this sort of feature. But the thing about having the halves on one unit, like this, is that the halves are still close together, meaning that our arms still angle inwards. And that's the advantage of split ergonomic keyboards, where the gap can be increased or adjusted to your liking. However, there are keyboards like the Kinesis Advantage, which are also a single unit, but the halves are split at a much greater distance. But I don't know, I kind of do like angling my arms towards the middle. When I was using my Mistel Barocco split keyboard, I didn't like them to be too far away from each other. Part of that was because I'm not such a great typist, and I found it somewhat disorientating when I typed. The other big aspect of this keyboard is the key layout. A standard keyboard has straight rows but has staggered columns, so we would call this a normal stagger. The X bows, on the other hand, in their words, use a crossbow radial pattern. So we can see where the name come from since the layout does resemble a crossbow to a degree, but in other words, they're using what is almost like an ortholinear layout, but curved. But since it's not just using a straight matrix or grid, it would be closer to a columnar staggered design. But this is where this one is special. The keys space out towards the top like a circle. And this is something that I'm not too sure on. It makes sense to do this since that is how our hands and fingers are shaped, and the further you go from the center of the circle, the larger the arc will be. At first, I thought this would create more lateral movement, but if you do use all your fingers, your fingers will already be in place. I haven't had enough experience with keyboards like the ErgoDox, so I can't fully judge this sort of experience for comparison, but I do feel comfortable with my fingers spread out a bit, which this radial design encourages. However, the main problem I see with this is how the pinky fingers have a greater distance to cover. Since the keys gradually get spaced out towards the top, the keys that the pinky has to reach to are further than usual, and of course since it's the shortest finger, it doesn't really make too much sense to me. And that's why the staggered columbar design is often used such as with the ergo dots. Another big implementation is the middle section. On this version, they've gone with a singular spacebar in the middle, rather than two spacebars. It's not standard to the max, but the shape made it very easy to hit, and you won't be replacing these keycaps anytime soon anyway. However, most of us hit the spacebar with our thumbs, which tend to be on the left or right side of the spacebar, so there's actually a lot of space wasted in that middle area of the key. So on the final version, they've split the spacebar and wedged a shift and control key in there, although now we're left with these huge alt keys which I really don't think is needed. They also have an enter key above it. This is something that I rarely used. I found that the normal enter key was in a decent position and I was just too used to using it. But the biggest thing for me was the backspace in the middle. I found myself constantly using it and I actually really enjoyed it. And this is what having a split design can provide. However, using the middle backspace was forced on me since the normal backspace is a good couple of kilometers away from the rest of the keys. And this is due to that radial design, as the keys in that row are much more spaced out than the others, causing the backspace to be so far away. While the enter key isn't as close as it would be normally, because it's on the third row, the spacing isn't as exaggerated, making it more tolerable. Fortunately, on the final version, they've attempted to help with this overstretching by extending the further columns downwards, which definitely helps a bit with the pinky reaching problems, following the principles of the staggered columnar design. So the backspace is ever so slightly closer as well, and in doing so, they've extended the bottom row downwards to make it match up to the bottom. 
On the left side are all your normal keys, but they're all one unit keys. And I found this absolutely fine to use. There were some problems with some combinations at the start. Like, for example, pressing Ctrl Z for undo was a bit weird, since they're so close to each other. There were also other combinations that were difficult to use when working on different programs. For example, Control and 7 are more further away from each other than normal, although these limitations force you into using the keyboard more efficiently. The middle shift and control keys encourage more thumb use, but there are still the left and right control keys and the left shift key. There is no right shift key though. On top is the function row and it's just in a straight line. I don't really use those keys often but I'm not sure why it didn't follow the curvature of the rest of the keyboard. F5 to F8 are especially hard to reach and it does require me to lift my hands to press it. On a normal keyboard these keys can be easily reached. And on the right there's some navigation keys which I'm fine with. Perhaps these two gaps here could have been filled in with some keys just to give it a more unifying look, like maybe the home and end keys. As for the final version build, they did make it a touch more compact around the sides. They've gone for a more sleek look with chamfered edges rather than the sandwich design I have, and the keyboard is black. They're still going with ABS keycaps, but they're going to be double shot, so I would say it's a pretty attractive keyboard overall. For the switches, they've opted with Cherry MX switches or Gatoron Reds apparently, and interestingly enough, it will have RGB lighting. They also state that they will have an extra USB port somewhere, so at the moment we'll just have to wait and see how the final version turns out, but on paper it promises to be a pretty solid keyboard. So overall it was a really good learning experience, at first it was really frustrating to use, but as I got used to it I began to realise some of the advantages of this keyboard and how to use it more efficiently. As said before, I haven't had an extended amount of time with it, but within a week I was typing a bit faster and with more fingers. And amazingly this transferred over to when I went back to a normal keyboard, although it was hard to switch back at first. The main feature of this keyboard is the radial pattern, and that's what makes it special. It lacks the flexibility of other split ergonomic keyboards, and there's a few quirks like some of the function keys and the backspace being quite far away. However, this made me realise how important good typing technique is, and how efficient and ergonomic it is. And people with good techniques are the ones who will get the most out of using this keyboard. And I so wish I had more time with it to learn how to type properly, because it definitely reduces some hand movement and is comfortable to use. They also have a mini version which is not mechanical and is more for tablets and stuff, but that's a layout I would have really loved to see with these mechanical switches.